Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at 15 common uh, Docker error related interview questions and we'll also look at the uh, uh, detailed answers for these uh, questions. Now, whether you are preparing for a Docker interview or you just want to sharpen your troubleshooting skills, then this video is for you. Whether you are new to Docker or looking to level, level up, these insights will help you navigate and resolve Docker issues like a pro. Once again, before I get started with this, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question we have is what causes the Docker cannot connect to the Docker daemon error and how do you resolve it? So this error occurs when the Docker client is not able to connect to the Docker daemon. So when we talk about your Docker architecture, we have the Docker client and the Docker daemon. So the Docker client is what we use to interact with the Docker. And Docker daemon is the one that basically processes the uh, commands, all right? So whenever you get the error, that means that the Docker client is not able to talk to the Docker daemon. So for this, we need to make sure that Docker daemon, the service is running. If it's not running, um, you can start the service. So you can first check the status. So we can either use the system CTL status Docker command or service Docker status command. If the service is not running, then we can go ahead and start the service. Uh, we can also check if uh, the user has all the necessary permission. So ensure that the user is in the Docker group. And if it's not there, then we can add the user to the Docker group by running this command sudo user mod hyphen a g docker which is a group and then the user that you want to add to that group and then finally we need to ensure that the docker host environment variable is correctly set especially in remote docker setup so we need to basically check all these things uh, most commonly you will the error would be that the docker daemon itself is not running so we'll just need to start it the next question we have is how do you fix the docker image pull back of error so this Error occurs when Docker is not able to pull the image that we have specified. So it's basically either it's not able to find the image or there's a network issue, could be multiple reasons. So first we'll need to check if you are giving the right image name and the tag of that image is correct. Then we'll need to ensure that there are no network issues uh, that might be preventing the access to the image registry. So making sure uh, we have all the network connectivity and everything. Uh, then we'll need to ensure uh, we are passing the right credentials. So if you are pulling the image from a private registry, verify that the credentials are connect and uh, correct and they are configured with your Docker login. So check if you are giving the right image name, the right tag name, check we don't have any network issues and then we need to check if you are passing the right credentials. The next question we have is what is the cause of the no space left on device error in Docker and how do you resolve it? So this error occurs when the host machine, the machine where we are running the container runs out of space. Let's say you have allocated 8 GB of storage and you already utilized it. So you won't be able to run any more containers on that machine. So for this, we'll need to either clean up uh, the containers or the images or any unused containers we are no longer using or any images, we need to remove them. So we can use this docker system prune-a command which will help us to remove any unused data then we'll need to check the disk usage so you know identify if the containers are utilizing the data or if it's uh, some other uh, data that's that's been uh, stored so for this we can use the df-h command which will help us to identify the disk usage and then if you want we can free up the uh, space and then finally um, if we identify that we, we cannot de delete any more data and we need more space then we can simply go ahead and increase the uh, disk size on your machine where our docker or the containers are running the next question we have is what does the container is unhealthy status indicate and how do you troubleshoot it so when we are creating our docker file we have the option of creating a health check for the containers that we're going to create now one of the status of that would be unhealthy status now this means that the health check that we have passed in the docker file is not uh, working as expected and it is failing now for this we can check the uh, logs of your containers to see what is going wrong 
Uh, so we can use this Docker uh, logs and the name of your container. So in this case, let's say Apache underscore container. Now this will show you the logs of that, that particular container. And we'll need to find out if there are any errors in those logs. Uh, then we can also review the command itself, the health check command that we are passing. So making sure the health check command is correct and it is accessible within the container. The URL, whatever we are passing, it's working. It's it's we are able to hit that from the container, and then finally check if there are any dependencies. So verify we have all the dependencies available and they are working as expected uh, to to make sure that the health checks are working uh, the way we want them. The next question we have is how to resolve a permission denied error when accessing files inside a Docker container. So this error typically indicates that uh, we have a file permission issue or you know basically there's a file ownership issue or a file permission issue so for this we'll need to uh, one option we have is to run that container as a root so that you know we don't have this uh, file uh, permission issues so run the container with root privileges so when we're running the docker run command we can use this hyphen hyphen user argument and we can path, pass the user root so that will tell docker that i want to run the commands as a uh, root user we can also change the permission uh, of the file itself by making use of the chmod command or chown command which will allow access to those um, uh, files and then we can look at the mount option so when we are mounting the volumes we can ensure that uh, the the files the host directory has correct permissions so that we don't get any file permission issues the next question we have is how do you fix the docker bind for 0.0.0.0 colon 80 failed port is already allocated error now when we start a container on a particular port uh, if it's already in use we won't be able to start another container on the same port number okay that's when we uh, get this error so that it, it basically means that the specified port it's already in use some other container is using it now uh, one option we have is if you want to use the same port number then we'll need to stop the uh, conflicting container um, uh, so we can use a docker ps command to identify the container and then we can run the docker stop and then the name of the container to stop that container then we can modify the port mapping to uh, use a different uh, port number so uh, we can use this docker run command hyphen p which is to specify the port mapping and then 80 80 colon 80 and then the image name then uh, the other option we have is to release the port so we can use this sudo ls of hyphen i colon 80 to find and then stop any process which is using this port number so basically if you want to use the same port number then we will need to release that port number if not then we will need to use some other port number to start the container the next question we have is how do you resolve the docker cannot start service mounts denied error so this error um, generally occurs due to incorrect or restricted mount point so you know the mount point the mount path could be wrong so we need to ensure that the mount path whatever the mount path we are giving it exists and also it has the correct permission so you know uh, the mount path has all the necessary permissions um, and then we can check for the docker desktop settings so if you're on the uh, windows machine or mac machine then we need to ensure that file path that we're trying to use they are shared and they are also allowed basically having the necessary permissions and then we'll need to use the valid bind mount so the syntax that we're using the bind mount syntax whether it is correct or not we'll verify that so for example docker run hyphen v the mount point on the host machine colon the mount path on the container machine and then the name of the image so uh, once we do this whatever the data we will have we will create or um, any data that we have in this path will be stored on the host machine path the next question we have is what causes the docker connection reset by peer error and how do you troubleshoot it so this error generally indicates there's some network connectivity issues between the docker containers or the docker daemon and external services so for this we we'll need to check um, the docker network settings whether they are correctly configured or not uh, we we'll need to check if there are any firewalls that are blocking the traffic or any security groups that are uh, blocking the traffic 
uh, we can also check the container resource limits so making sure that uh, the containers have sufficient resources and not been throttled or killed due to insufficient resources so one check network settings um, check the firewalls and then check the resource whether we have sufficient resources or not the next question we have is how do you resolve the docker layer already exists error during a docker build so this error occurs when we are trying to use an existing layer but uh, encounter a conflict so we have an existing layer we are trying to use it but then we are getting a conflict and we are not able to use that now to resolve this we can either clear the build cache so we can use this docker builder prune command or we can use this docker build hyphen hyphen no hyphen cache uh, which will tell that we do not want to reuse the cached layer so do not use the cached layers i want to i want you to create new layers uh, ensure the docker file so making sure the commands are correctly defined uh, we have the right syntax and that changes are necessary to create new layers so i don't want to use cache i want to create new layers and then rebuild the image from the scratch to resolve any cache issues so um, uh, you know basically this could be a cache issue we'll need to avoid using that cache and kind of build new layers um, and then start from the scratch which will help us to resolve this error the next question we have is what causes the cannot delete docker network network has active endpoints error and how we set so this error occurs when we are trying to delete a network but then we have some containers which are already connected to those networks so basically the network is still in use so for this uh, we need to remove the containers so first we need to list the containers that are connected to this network so we can um, uh, inspect so we can run this docker network inspect and then the name of the network so this command will give us a list of all the containers that are connected to this overlay network so then we'll need to disconnect the containers from this network so uh, we can use this docker network disconnect uh, the name of the network and then the container that you want to disconnect once that is done we can also stop and remove those containers if they are no longer needed so basically we will need to remove the containers from the, that network only then we will be able to delete that um, uh, network the next question we have is how to resolve a docker unknown instruction in docker file error so this error occurs when uh, the docker file that we are writing it contains an invalid instruction or it contains a misspelled instruction so we'll need to basically check the syntax so ensure all the instructions in the docker file are spelled correctly and all the instructions are in the uppercase all right like the from instruction run instruction cmd instruction we we'll need to validate all these instructions we'll also need to check the compatibility of the docker file version so you know to ensure that docker the syntax that we're using the docker file it's compatible with the version of docker that we are uh, using and then finally we can take a look at the docker documentation so refer the official docker file reference guide to check what are the valid instructions that we can use whether there are some typos we can check all those things the next question we have is what is the docker cannot kill container error and how do you resolve it now whenever we are trying to delete a container we need to make sure the containers are stopped so if a container is not stopped we won't be able to delete a container all right so first we need to stop the container now you can forcefully stop the container by using this docker kill and then the name of the container but this command will forcefully stop the container once the container has been stopped we can go ahead and remove it so we can also forcefully remove the container by using this docker rm hyphen f and the name of the container and this will forcefully delete the container from the host machine all right and then ensure that the container is not in a paused state before trying to kill it all right the next question we have is how to resolve the docker invalid reference format error now this error it generally occurs when the image name or the tag or the repository format is incorrect so the information that we are giving to the docker 
it's incorrect so one will need to check that the image name and the tag that we are providing they follow the right format like repository colon tag format like let's say if you're using the apache and apache colon latest so we're using the right um, uh, format then we will need to remove any invalid characters so make sure we are not passing any spaces in the image name we are not passing any special characters in the image name we need to make sure and then uh, we're using the valid repository names the the image name basically right so repo name adheres to docker's naming convention so we need to make sure so making sure we are passing the right information is what we need to do the next question we have is what causes the docker cannot connect to docker daemon at unix colon slash 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 var slash run slash docker dot sock error and how do you fix it now this error generally indicates that the docker client is not able to talk to the docker daemon socket so again a docker client is not able to talk to the docker daemon now in this case we need to uh, again start docker service so we can either um, uh, we, need, we can check the status of the service by running uh, systemctl status docker command and if docker is not running we can go ahead and start it for that we can run this service docker start command and again we can check the status uh, we can also make sure that uh, the the docker.soc file has all the necessary permissions if it does not have the necessary permissions we can set the permission by using this sudo ch mod command so see it sudo ch mod 666 and then the path where the docker.soc file is present uh, and then we can also uh, update the docker group permission so the user that we are trying to use if it's it's get, still getting error then we can add that user to the docker group by using this command sudo user mod hyphen ag docker which is the group name and then the user the next question we have is how do you troubleshoot the docker container exited with code 130 error so um, when we kill the container or when we exit from the container uh, exit code 137 is one of the possible um, uh, exit code we have now this indicates that the container terminated due to an out of memory condition or the container was manually killed now how do we um, uh, avoid this one we can adjust the memory limits of the container so we can use this hyphen hyphen memory attribute or hyphen hyphen memory hyphen swap uh, attribute when we are uh, creating our containers uh, we can check the utilization of the resources so monitor the containers resource usage so for this we can make use of the docker stats command and this will ensure that it's not exceeding the available uh, memory and then finally we can consider optimizing the application so review and optimize the application that we're running inside the container which will help us to reduce the um, uh, memory consumption inside that container right and that brings us to the end of our 15 common uh, docker interview uh, questions and answers i hope you found this uh, video helpful for both your interviews and uh, real world troubleshooting if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that like button subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for more devops and docker content thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video